I'm on the last leg of my fat loss sprint. I'm the leanest that I've ever been. And I got a bunch of cool recipes that I have coming up on the channel. So with all those things combined, I wanted to do a full day of eating and show you guys what I'm doing currently. Because as you guys know, with every full day of eating, it's very different than the last with all the recipe testing that I do and all the variety that I have. We're gonna start with a really dope recipe that I've just started testing a few days ago. And that is a Japanese pancake. It takes just a little effort than regular pancakes, but these things are so fluffy and honestly, probably the most flavorful protein pancake that I've ever had. I don't have the exact ingredients down, but it's very simple. We gotta separate our egg white from our egg yolk. And unlike most anabolic recipes or low calorie recipes, we are keeping this yolk. What we're doing with these egg whites is we're gonna make a meringue. So I need to get my sugar or my swerve portioned out right now. Then we got a little milk, vanilla extract, pinch of salt, and we're gonna sift our, our protein and flour just to make sure this gets mixed in really well. Again, I'm just testing and I'm trying to see what works best, as well as just a little bit of baking powder, very little bit. This ingredient list might have seemed a little bit daunting at the start of the video, but I could guarantee if you follow my channel for any amount of time, you probably have all this ready to go. So you'll be able to make this as soon as the recipe drops. A big percentage of the people that watch this video are subscribers. so. What's up y'all? How are y'all doing? I try to keep up with everyone in the comments and the DMs as much as possible, but I haven't gotten to do a more personal video like this in a while and I love doing it. So what's up? Winter's coming up. It's about to be bulking season, at least for me. And I'm just mixing this until this comes together. The most important part here is our meringue. This is gonna take about two minutes. So I'm gonna let this thing go and you're gonna see how frothy these, peats, <laughs> these peaks get by the end of it. Yes, we're gonna take the first little bit here and just mix it in. I am so unbelievably excited and I'm not usually even hungry for breakfast, but these pancakes were so good the last few days that I'm just so damn excited to have these and they're so different from everything else that you see in like the fitness community. If we want these tall pancakes, we gotta lightly fold these in. Last thing we gotta do is we're gonna pipe this. So I just have a gallon bag inside of a cup and we're gonna put this in here. And I've had this pan preheating on low, like low, low. These need to cook for about five minutes. So I'm gonna try and make these as tall as I possibly can. I don't have a proper lid. So I'm gonna put some water. Oh shit. Hopefully that works, but I probably just messed it up. That's okay. That's what tests and tri trials are there for. Oh, looking beautiful. These things are impossible to flip. I'm gonna try and flip them, but it's probably not gonna work. Here we go. Ooh, a little dark. This is the best one I've had so far. And you live and you learn. These need like four minutes next time instead of five. No big deal. They're still going to be delicious. I confirmed that through trying the cake batter already. We started out a little bit rough. We came out on top, at least I think. Now these don't even need syrup, but just for aesthetic, put a little bit on there. I've eaten these both times without syrup. That's how you know the pancakes are really good. They are super fluffy. They're like nothing else I've ever had before. You go to a pancake house, you get a flapjack. It's great, don't get me wrong. This is just a whole new level. Most mornings, I've just been having muffins. They provide as much protein as they do calories. They're filling and they're easy. These are the pumpkin ones and they're like legit pull apart. All the reviews on the video have been great. So you should definitely check out that video if you haven't already. And you can just see the inside is just so fluffy. Crazy. And this is a fat stack for 350 calories. Total macros for this meal, 428 calories, 46 protein, 54 carb. Most of those carbs aren't real like calories because it's almost all swerve and 14 fat. I am ecstatic to come out with this recipe. I haven't come out with a pancake recipe yet. And I think this is the perfect introduction because it's like nothing anyone's seen before. And it's probably the best that I've ever had as far as protein pancakes go. I've started working on my cookbook and to do that, I need to go back through all my old recipes and take pictures and make sure that I would still be using the same ingredients and that I would still do the same process and everything like that. Right now I'm on my banana cream protein pudding. <laughs> if you go back and watch that video, it's actually pretty good for being one of my first recipe videos and one of my first videos in general, but there's definitely some things that I wanna tweak on it. And I wanna show you this recipe because I'm sure a majority of you have never seen that recipe before. Best part is this is literally a pump and dump type of recipe where you put everything in the blender, you mix it, 
and you're done. I definitely have to give respect where it's due. I originally got this recipe from Greg Doucette, put my own spin on it, and I'm here to revisit it, so I had to shout him out again. We are going to start with five servings of almond milk. I'm using the 35 calorie, usually I use even the 30 calorie almond milk, but you can use regular milk here instead, which I actually might have to, since I don't think I have five servings left or five cups. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to use half almond milk, half fat-free Fairlife milk, and it's gonna boost the calories up a little bit, but it's also significantly gonna boost the protein here as well. Next up, we have cottage cheese. I hate cottage cheese, despise it, but for the purposes of this recipe, it doesn't taste like it, and it adds a lot of volume and a lot of protein. So we're adding 440 grams. Oh my God. Today's not my day, I'm telling you. Then we got two scoops of protein. I'm using the Gourmet Vanilla PE Science, but use whatever protein you have. If you do need to re-up on some PE Science, use code E4CM, save yourself 10% and help support the channel. This is gonna help thicken things up and make it more pudding-like, not to mention add 50 grams of protein. Then we're gonna add four servings of what should be banana cream jello. All I have is pudding or vanilla on hand, and as you know, there are no rules in the kitchen. So since I only have vanilla, we're just gonna use vanilla. Then we got 40 grams of Swerve, two grams of Xanthan gum. <laughs> this is when Greg used to put the most Xanthan gum ever in all of his stuff. And I used two tablespoons, which is way too much. With the weight casing blend, we're only gonna need a couple grams. Last but not least, we have our bananas, 260 grams. And you want ripe ones, ones like this that are just falling apart like that, and we're gonna throw this in there and mix it up. Ooh, I'm sloppy today. Sloppy, sloppy, toppy. Wow, 260 on the dot. Sloppy toppy, but exact measurements. By the way, as you can see, this blender is full to the brim. You're gonna need a ninja blender here or a blender that holds a lot. So I'm gonna get this on. Last time I did it for about two minutes. I haven't done this in a couple of years, so I'm in this journey with you. See you in a minute. Let's see how this is looking after two minutes. I'm gonna give it another minute. God damn it. Tastes good, too wet for my liking. So I'm gonna try and correct that with about a gram of xanthan gum. Now I still don't think it's thick enough, but this is why we are in D, the cookbook, and we're gonna make sure that everything is exact as possible and make sure everything is up to date. And I wanna see if it thickens up in the fridge, but this is meal prep. This is six servings. So I'm gonna even this out between six. All right, so that took all of, I don't know, 10 minutes total per serving. We're looking at an estimated 174 calories, 18 protein, 26 carb, which a bunch of them come from the swerve, and three fat. Now I could easily have these every day before the gym, but this isn't the only thing I like incorporating before the gym. I want a good amount of carbs that will fuel my workout. And I messed up on one of my doughs for my pizza meal prep that I'll be coming out with and I'll be talking about later in this video. And I was able to make protein bread. And I want more carbs for my pre-workout. These carbs are gonna fuel me. I've been in a deficit for a good amount of time now. So I wanna make sure that I have, you know, 50, 60, 70 grams of carbs before my workout. This stuff is absolutely delicious and is way better than anything you're gonna get for the same amount of calories in the store. For this pre workout meal, we are looking at 31 protein, 66 carb, and four fat. The perfect amount of carbs, protein, and fat, in my opinion at least, for a great workout. So I'm gonna eat this and I will see you guys after we get the pump. What I'm eating isn't the only thing that is helping me lose weight. It is also how I'm training and many of you guys have been asking me what I'm doing. Since the last full day of eating, not much has changed. I lift six days a week, I do one dedicated day of cardio, and every day I'm doing anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes of additional cardio at the end of my session. The biggest difference between now and then is I am doing a much smaller deficit. I got to the point where I'm right around and now at the leanest that I've ever been and I feel good and to me it's like if I go a little bit farther that's fine if I make no more progress that's also fine so the motivation definitely isn't there for me at this point but at the same time I am still making progress towards my goal and because of that my workouts have been going great and today was a bicep focused workout with some other movements mixed in there as well weird delts back everyone has their bad days at the gym or they have a low energy session but overall all 
of my gym sessions have really been very good. And I'm gonna make a whole separate video about this, but people are gonna ask how I did it exactly. And the truth is, slow and controlled, boring. I did a fat loss sprint where I would lose a good amount of weight and then I would take two or three weeks off and I would gain a little bit of weight back, but then I'd go into another fat loss sprint, lose a good amount of weight, gain a little bit of weight back, back and forth for the last six months. And I went from about 209, 210 to now about 190 to 192-ish on any given day. I'm probably going to do a week or two at maintenance and then I'm going to go into a bulk phase. I'm probably going to spend about three to six months in a pretty consistent bulk to really try and put on some mass before I do another cutting phase. Next time, I'm not sure if I'll do another straight cut or if I'll do fat loss sprints again. With the results that I've had with fat loss sprints, I'm probably not going to shift course. I'll probably do longer fat loss sprints. Next time, I'm gonna plan it to where I don't have to do like two weeks and then a bachelor party, three weeks and then a wedding, four weeks and then another wedding. Like that was just very hard to consistently lose weight and not gain some of it back during the maintenance phases when I shouldn't have gained really any or maybe a pound or two. But overall, the point is I'm the leanest that I've ever been with the most muscle mass that I've ever had. So that's a win in my book. Is it Instagram worthy where it's gonna go viral? Absolutely not. But is it something that I've been able to consistently do? Don't feel like I'm dieting. I've been eating brownies, muffins, pizzas, calzones. Like I've been eating everything under the sun and coming out of this, I don't feel like I'm gonna binge. Like last time when I was this lean, I think I went on vacation or something like that and I just went wild and I gained a lot of fat back really fast. This time I'm gonna have a plan in place to not have that happen, but I'm hungry. It's time for meal three and I was already planning to have a protein shake afterward because I like to have a big dinner. That works out perfect because I just received this truffle protein that P Science dropped today. And many of you were asking how this tastes, so I wanted to let you know if it's worth buying or if you should just pass it up. And coincidentally, Gorilla Mind just dropped their own beta alanine and creatine standalone supplements. And as we know, creatine is one of the most proven supplements in the game. And if you're only taking like a scoop of mode, you could supplement the other two and a half grams with the standalone. Or if you take nitric and you don't take the stim version, you could supplement the full five grams with the standalone supplement or if you don't take either pre-workout, you can just use creatine by itself. Now let's go try this protein. It smells like your typical chocolate protein. <laughs> I mean, it tastes like a good chocolate protein. It's definitely not something that just like blows me away. For how hyped this was, I'm disappointed, but it's definitely better than your average chocolate protein. And average is about a 7.0 for me. I would give this like a 7.6, 7.7 out of 10. I enjoyed it, but it's nothing that I'm gonna like go on Instagram and hype it up and be like, oh my God, you need to get this. If you need a good chocolate tasting protein, Truffle has your back. We're not eating dinner for a couple hours, but we have to start getting dinner ready. But that involves almost absolutely no work. So I have a pizza meal prep that is coming out very shortly that only costs a dollar per day per pizza. All we have to do is take this out of the fridge, let this chill for a couple hours, and I've never made dinner rolls yet. I've been doing garlic knots, but I'm super excited to try these dinner rolls. And all I have to do is let these sit. Our dinner rolls are all puffed up, and all we have to do with these now is throw these in the oven. My oven just finished preheating and these take about six to eight minutes longer to cook. So while this starts cooking, I'm gonna be able to do the pizza and they will be ready at the same time. To really illustrate just how easy this is and how you can use pretty much anything, I'm gonna use this nonstick that doesn't have any nonstick left. I actually have a new one on the way, but you can use anything to make this. To get a nice brown and to make sure it doesn't stick to the pan, I'm gonna add a couple grams of avocado oil here and I'm gonna spray Spread it out with my hand. We'll get our dough. You could see it's risen about 50 to 75%. Now I'm gonna get my other hand with some oil on it. Sorry, this is lopsided. I'm telling you this nonstick has been through hell and back. And I'm just gonna press the dough down and spread it out. The goal is to get it spread out enough that it's at the corners of the pan. And so I pretty much start doing anything I need to do 
to get it spread out. Spin it in a circle, use both my hands and stretch it out. And after about two to three minutes of just pushing down and spreading out, our dough is ready. For the meal prep, I've simplified, <laughs> For the meal prep, I've simplified my tomato sauce down to three ingredients, including the tomatoes. So this is gonna be super easy to make. You don't have to do anything but stir. I'm gonna put 100 grams on here and I'm just gonna spread it out. But the great part about this is you make these ingredients one time and you're gonna have pizzas for the entire week. And I'm gonna be coming out with a video of if you have extra dough and you don't wanna make pizza, what you can do with the extra dough. And just like the sauce, the dough is only like four ingredients as well. And you put it in a food processor, no need, you split it up and you have it ready for the week. And this is where you can play with it. It's gonna cost a dollar, but not including extra ingredients. I have bacon made. So I'm gonna add bacon to it. My cast iron's about 10 inches. I usually spread it about nine inches in the cast iron, but that's gonna be the great thing. You can make it as thick or as thin as you want. And for just 50 extra calories, we have bacon. Last thing we need is some cheese, and we're just gonna use straight up part skim, low moisture, mozz, and this is about 56 to 60 grams. I haven't finalized the recipe yet. I'm still gonna give it probably two or three more pizzas that I'm gonna try out. And once again, you shred this once, you have it for the entire week. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means. This is going right into the oven and I will see you back once these beauties are done. The barrier to entry is so low on fresh made dough now that there's no excuse not to do it. This is $1 made in a shit ass pan and it took me all of five minutes to prep and I have these for the entire week. Not only that, but the macros are great too. You get about a nine inch pizza for right around 600 calories. I haven't finalized it yet, but you get the picture. The cheese is perfectly cooked. You could cook it a little less if that's how you like it, but I like a lot of brown spots on it. There's definitely some nice browning on the bottom, bacon bits throughout, just enough cheese to be happy, and I'm so excited. Okay, well, let's do the dinner rolls first. The dinner rolls came out perfect. Aesthetically, don't look perfect, but the inside, the bottom, everything about them looks absolutely phenomenal. There definitely needs some more testing, but protein dinner rolls, come on. I would say those are like an 8.2 out of 10, could use some improvement, especially aesthetically. They're only gonna get better, and I can't wait to drop this recipe, hopefully like Thanksgiving or Christmas time, so you can make it, bring it to your family. They'll have no idea that it's packed with protein. That crunch. For the pizza, you're not gonna get all the bells and whistles that you would get for my other ones, but it's super easy to make, it's super cheap to make, and you could fit it into your diet all week long, no matter what your calories are. There's nothing like Easter's and dough. Greek yogurt, forget about it. Self-rising dough, forget about it. Too good, gotta go over the macros. For half the pizza, half the rolls. We're looking at 962 calories, 17 fat, 143 carbs, and 57 protein. On the day, that equals 2,091 calories, 176 protein, 281 carb. Again, don't think about it as actual carbs because a lot of these are net carbs, and 45 fat. Check out this five-minute full day of eating I did just a few months back, and until next time, deuces.